Parshas Vayigash. The great revelation takes place in this week's Parsha, where Yosef reveals himself to his brothers. The brothers, of course, as we know, are quite shocked. They're speechless. They don't know what to say. And Yosef consoles them. In Perak Memhe, we find the great revelation and the great consolation. Pasuk Dalit says, Vayomer Yosef elachav gishunai lai vayigashim. Yosef says, my brothers, come close, and they all approach. And he says, I am Yosef, your brother, whom you sold down to Egypt. But now don't be sad. And do not be upset in your own eyes. Don't be angry at yourselves. For having sold me down here. Because God has sent me down here for sustenance purposes. God has sent me down to take care of things. And as he explains, that it's that we have another two years of famine, and there's another five, it's been, it's, it's been two years of famine, and there's going to be another five years of famine. And in Pasuk Zion, he therefore says, Vayishlacheni Elohim Lifneichem, that God has sent me in front of you to provide for you a remnant in the land, meaning I, I want you to be provided for. And to give you uh, sustenance and, and great sanctuary, and great uh, a place of, re- of refuge. Now if you take a look at Rashi, God has sent me for sustenance. Now, who has God asked me to sustain? So Rashi over here says, Lihiyot lachem lemichia. To sustain, to provide sustenance for you. Now, what is Rashi coming to teach me over here? Basic question. Just take a look at those three words in Rashi. The Pasuk had said that God has brought me down here for sustenance purposes. And Rashi says, Lihiyot lachem lemichia. To be for you for sustenance. If you, so we know the famous question after you learn every Rashi, what's bothering Rashi? What's bothering Rashi over here? Anyone want to chime in? Anyone want to make a suggestion? Yes? It sounds like he's talking about Nikhia for the whole of Egypt. For the whole world. Oh, so, so it could be that there are two ways to understand this Pasuk Rashi says. Right, exactly. Um, one is, is Hashem, why did Hashem send me? To take care of Egypt? No. That might be the, from the external viewpoint, that might be the reason why God sent me down here. But no. In reality, God God sent me down here to sustain you. Because I know that you need to come down to Egypt. You need a source of sustenance. The famine is pervasive. And Hashem sent me here so that I could take care of my family. Which is very Judeo-centric when you think about it. You know? Um, I mean, just, just think about it for a second. God has orchestrated Yosef to come down to Egypt. He has actually now transformed the Egyptian economy so that despite the fact that there's a famine where normally tens of thousands of people would be dead, Yosef has found a way to keep the society functioning and literally to save tens of thousands of people's lives who would normally have starved. And Yosef says, ah, according to Rashi, Yosef says, but everything is for the Jewish people. So even though I may have ended up saving lots of Egyptians, but that's not really why I'm here. I'm really here to make sure that my mishpacha is taken care of. Yes? I do that to this day. People are wondering, why was Trump elected? Because he's going to be good for Israel. Other people could look at us and say, that's crazy. Trump is president of the whole United States just because of the Jews. He's going to be good to Israel. Yeah, that's right. But we always look at things Even that like way. the old story, when Babe Ruth hit the home run, is it good, is for, it good for the Jews? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So that's the way Rashi learns. But that's not the way everybody learns. And, and the truth is that when you look at the psukim, it seems, if you're going to learn like Rashi, that the sole purpose that Yosef wanted to portray to his brothers, that why he was down there was for them, then the psukim seemed to run on redundantly. 
Because if he's saying even in Pasuk Hay that I've been sent here to take care of you, then why do you need Pasuk Zayin, which is that God has sent me in front of you to provide you with sanctuary and to provide you with wherewithal to be able to have a place to go to. It seems like he's saying the same thing then in Pasuk Hay and in Pasuk Zayin. So how do you reconcile it? So I want to show you Rav Yitzchak Arama from the 15th century um, in the Akedah Siyitzchak, very important Torah commentary that is not learned, studied widely enough, only because A, it's not in the Mikrot Gadolot, and also because, like the Abarbanel, it's very lengthy and very difficult to get through. But it's a very important Torah commentary. And what the Akedah Siyitzchak says is that he says, I'm, for, for a time purpose, I'm going to skip to... Um, I'm going to, to skip to the second line. He says, Omnam heyota heina makom acher. What Yosef was trying to explain to his brothers, he says, don't be sad that you sold me down here. Why did he have to say the word heina, that you brought me down here? So he says, Hayasiba l'shenehepcha atzatam. He says, you know why God arranged for me to be sold here and not somewhere else? And that's what he says in the, in the following words, that God has sent me down for sustenance purposes. And what he was trying to communicate to them is that even though this was a criminal act that you did, but there was a great byproduct that came out as a result of it. Which should also be attributed to God. And you brothers participated. You participated in the criminal act, but you also participated in the glorious, great thing that God wanted to happen. And that's the, the main line that you should really underline. What was the great objective? What was the great benefit that was that resulted from my being sold down here? Which was to sustain all lands in the Middle East from hunger that is both current and that is going to continue into the future. So Rabbi Yitzchak Arama clearly disagrees with Rashi. And he says that this Pasuk of Kilo Mechia Shalachani Elohim Lifnechem was that Hashem sent me to provide greatness to the world, to provide a gift to the world, and that is to provide the world with a respite from hunger. And as we'll see, sometimes the role of the Jew is not just to help the fellow Jew, but is to provide goodness to the world. And then, he says, Elokim and then in Pasuk Zion, he says that God has also sent me as a way of making your landing that much softer. He says, not only is that general good, you know, over all-encompassing good for all people, one of the benefits of your action, but also there was a direct benefit specifically to you, my brothers. To provide for you respite in the land, the inyana parnasa, meaning that I was able now to arrange a parnasa for you, and also to make sure that you, my brothers, would be able to have a great spiritual portion as a result. In other words, when you sold me to Egypt, even though you weren't aware of it, but not only were you arranging a benefit for you and your and our family, the Jewish people, on a physical plane, but you were also arranging a special spiritual benefit for the Jewish people. And he says, and how is that? Because your actions precipitated the descent into Egypt which is necessary for us to have the Exodus experience, which is the basis of our religion. We could not, be, we could not emerge as the Jewish people 
without going through a descent into Egypt, a period of slavery, and a period of redemption. And it was because of your actions, you started that whole process going, my brothers. And so, don't be totally sad. In other words, yes, your act was criminal. Yes, naughty, 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 because you great, gave great anguish and pain to our father Yaakov. But also realize that you accomplished three great things. Thing number one that you accomplish is you brought provision to the world by sending me down to Egypt. Number two, you took care of yourselves as well and our family because we suffer from the same famine that the rest of the world does. And so you, by sending me down here, now I have a way of feeding my family. And benefit number three is you planted the seeds for redemption. And that's what pleita gedola means. That's what great, the great pleita, the great Deliverance is, is what Yosef is, what is being alluded to in Yosef's words according to the Akedah Yitzchak. Yes? So, by the same principle, everybody who does something wrong uh, can justify himself, yeah, but look, something good came out of it. This is a very important theological question. How does one, how was Yosef able to comfort his brothers if the intent of their deeds was still nonetheless evil? And so this is a question that we're not going to answer today. But it is a valid question nonetheless, which has to be explored more carefully. Remember that the brothers genuinely thought that they were doing the right thing. They genuinely thought that what they were doing was proper and good by selling Yosef into slavery, but that's a much longer discussion. It was revealed to them that what they did truly was a crime because of the great pain that it brought to their father. But nonetheless, from a divine perspective, they did not contravene the divine will because really God was part and parcel of this plan the entire time. That's essentially what Yosef is trying to tell us. Now, two approaches. The approach of Rashi, which it's all for the Jews. The approach of the Akedas Yitzchak, which is that Yosef accomplished something great for the world. The truth is Rav Kook, and I've mentioned this many times before, um, Rav Kook, in his Torah commentary, points out that sometimes both approaches are correct. And that's why you have different tribes of Israel. The main divide, when we look at this approach, is that are the Jews supposed to be accomplishing universal greatness for the world? Or should our focus simply be what can we accomplish for the Jewish people? Really, both are true. And that's why you have a Yosef and you have a Yehuda. There's the Yosef Yehuda divide, which I've mentioned before. I talked about it a couple of years ago in Shabbat Shuvah. But the source is this paragraph from Rav Kook, which we don't really have time to go into because we're almost out of time. But Rav Kook says that this was a basic machlokes between Yosef and Yehuda, and really what was what precipitated the sale of Yosef to begin with. Yosef genuinely believed that the way to achieve greatness for the Jewish people, and really the function of the Jewish people, was to be a light for the nations and to provide an example for the rest of the world about what it means to be a Jew, what it means to be the Bechir Hashem, to the chosen of God. And therefore, Yosef's attitude was, we have to go out into the world, we have to preach the gospel, we have to proselytize, we have to let people know that's what my Zayda of Avinu did after all. And Yehuda's approach was diametrically opposite to that. There's no question he felt that the role of the Jew is to be a light unto the nations, but you can only accomplish that if we strengthen the infrastructure of the Jewish community from within and allow people to witness that. We have to be passive examples, not active proselytizing examples. And therefore, the, the, the example that Yehuda felt that we need to, uh, or the focus that we need to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to exercise for Yehuda was to work from within, to avoid the danger of assimilation, which is quite real, and which is what happened to, to Yosef's descendants, that they ended up assimilating. That's why Ephraim is the first tribe of Israel that ends up assimilating and is lost uh, to, to Jewish history. Um, perhaps even according to the Gemara, according to one opinion, never to return. Because they went out and tried to have an effect on the other nations, and yet 
the other nations affected them as well. And so this was the danger in the Yosef approach. The Yehuda approach is, let's focus on our own strength, let's build up ourselves in Torah and Ma'asim Tovim, we are Am Levadad Yishkon, we are a nation that has to remain distinct and separate from the rest of the world, and therefore we don't focus on the rest of the world. It's, we therefore see the seeds of this dichotomy in this Parsha, which talks about the Yosef approach, Yosef's attitude, at least according to Akedis Yitzchak, was, I'm here for a larger purpose, which is to help the world. And then what does Yaakov do with Yehuda? Recognizing that Yosef has a role that he has to play, but yet we also need a Yehuda to be able to strengthen the Jewish people. At the end of the Parsha, the Torah says, in chapter 26, Ves Yehuda shalach lefanav el Yosef laharos lefanav goshna, he sends Yehuda to do what? To set up a Jewish infrastructure in the town of Goshen where the Jews will eventually live. And Rashi tells us, and that's the Rashi, the last line of this of your handout, he quotes a Medrash Agada that L'takein lo beit Talmud shemisham that Yehuda was deliberately sent not just to set up a Jewish community infrastructure, but to set up a yeshiva because that's what you need in order to create Jewish infrastructure. So Yosef is worried about the whole world, taking care of the whole world and providing a light for them and teaching them and proselytizing. <coughs> and like the Medrash says that y Yosef ordered every single Egyptian to be circumcised because he wanted to elevate the Kedusha of the entire Egyptian society. And Yaakov recognizing that that's not going to succeed if we're going to continue as a people, we have to remain distinct as well. Both fronts are necessary, and therefore he instructs Yehuda to take that other approach. And we have to, the final thing that I'll say is, is that many times we, uh, we feel that it's, you have to be either one. You have to choose between the two. And for some personality types, there are certain personality types which are Yehuda, certain personality types which are Yosefs, and that's all very well and good. But I think that there's something to be learned from here. One of the things to learn from it is that not every Jew is the same. Not every Jew is the same and that there are certain Jews who may not fit the, the depiction of what we are told is a righteous Jew because maybe they're not 100% observant. But the things that they're doing in the world to create a Kiddush Hashem and to bring light to the world who knows if in God's eyes they're not the Yosef that our world needs for today and are actually doing much, uh, much more as far as realizing the divine plan than the person who's uh, staying in their own Dalad Amot and observing Halacha. There's no way to know for sure, but the point is, is that for every Yehuda there should be a Yosef. And sometimes you can be both. I'll leave it for that for today and have a wonderful day.